Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the Mattel DC Universe Classics Wave 18. We're looking today at the final figure and the final piece that we needed to finish Apache Chief. We're looking today at Toy Man. Some younger viewers may look at this and say, that's not Toy Man, Toy Man's that little short guy from Superman. That was also Toy Man. Uh, this would probably be more Toy Man for the older generation of collectors out there that probably grew up with the Super Friends and Challenge of the Super Friends uh, cartoon. You probably recognize a, a Toy Man more so uh, appearing from that, from that design, from that, from that cartoon. Um, it looks like he does come with a couple of accessories one of which looks like a yo-yo. A yo-yo. On the back of the package, there's a picture of Toy Man. I really don't know what he's doing up here. It looks like he's kind of trying to hypnotize somebody with his, I guess, with his yo-yo. Uh, the biography says, Winslow Sh Shot. Winslow Shot is a shy inventor who has tricked into selling his toy company to an arms manufacturer. Realizing his technology was going into smart bombs, Schott sent an explosive teddy bear to his new boss. The ironic murder marked the birth of the Toy Man, a frequent adversary of Superman. Toy Man is a twisted genius who lost touch with reality and sets out to punish anyone he feels deserves it. Statistics, Action Comics number 64, September 1943. I'm trying to think if actually... This Toy Man is depicted, he very well might be, from the older cart comics as well. So, a real name, Winslow Parcival Schott. Occupation, Toy Manufacturer, Base of Operations, Metropolis, Special Abilities, Toy-themed weapons, including exploding balls, toy tanks that spray acid, and Superman action figures that really fly and have heat vision. How about that? Again, you can collect all six figures, which we have been all reviewing we've been looking at. Those figures include Black Vulcan, El Dorado, Toy Man, Captain Boomerang, Samurai, and Bronze Tiger. Collect all six and build your very own Apache Chief. I'm going to take a bit of a break. I'm going to get Toy Man out of package, and when we come back, we're going to look at the last figure that makes up DC Universe Wave 18. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And yes, yes, the final piece for Apache Chief comes with Toy Man, and that would be the other arm. What we'll do is we'll grab Apache Chief, snap it into place. There we go. And bada bing, bada boom, you've got yourself a fully realized, fully built, fully conceived Apache Chief. A review of him will follow. Let's put him aside. Let's have a look at Toy Man. I love this figure. I love this figure. Um, there's a lot of going on with this guy. He's a little garish with the coloring and everything else, but as a whole, I really, really like this. Um, for starters, this body mold is ideal. I'm so glad they didn't go with a much larger build for Toy Man. Toy Man is supposed to be lanky. Of course, you know, not factoring in the new Just League, well, the Just League uh, appearance of Toy Man, who was a little shorter and whatnot, but um, Toy Man from the comics and from the the, car the older cartoons. Lanky, I mean, this this figure perfectly depicts that character. This would also have been an ideal body mold for Riddler. <sighs> Instead, we got a much bigger, broader Riddler. I'm thinking of the jumpsuit Riddler, not the, the jacket Riddler. But this would have been an ideal figure mold to have used. I mean, they, uh, I guess the hands and everything else are new tools for Toy Man, but this, if they, they won't now, but if they had ever reused this body, even with the hands, this would be an ideal figure for Riddler. Anywho, um, in the way of his, well, let's have a look first at his face. I really like that face. The only thing I could really have said as a negative point to that face is it's not zany enough. 
And that's one thing that I always seem to comment on with some of the DC Universe figures. Some of them, lots of expression. L most of them, though, are pretty devoid of any personality. Toy Man, you can see he's kind of showing off his teeth. But it doesn't wow me. Like, for me, his eyes should have been a lot more open, and he almost should have had an open mouth like he was just completely crazy or, or, or fiendish, you know. This doesn't scream fiendish to me. This screams Sears Portrait Studio. What, sit like this? Oh, sorry, sorry, like, like this, like this. Chin up, okay, yeah, chin up, yeah. That's good, that's good. Um, can I get uh, a few wallet sizes for those? Um, to me, it just doesn't seem as fiendish as it, what it should. I mean, I find that's the one thing, the one gripe having reviewed DC Universe figures for as long as I have, that's the one thing I always want to say is a big negative point to the DC Universe. For how many figures there are released, we have never really gotten a lot of expressioned characters. Um, some figures sure have been. Other figures, though, I mean, really have deserved to have a little more personality going on with them, and for some reason they just haven't. Toy Man, again, is a very good example of that. But still, I like that head sculpt quite a bit. It works really, really well. And you can even see there's a little bit of blue going on the top of his, uh, his crown, or I guess his mask, if you can call it that. Um, it's a much harder plastic up at the top here. It doesn't look like it's going to give or break, but uh, I would worry packaging that, that if it warps for too long, of course, I guess even with Toy Man, even if it warps, it may not. It may, it may even add to the personality of the character. As for the rest of his body, you can see that he's got black, some yellow, yellow arms, and he's got these really non-complementary orange and purple lower half. Non-complementary, but again, it just it only adds to the zany, outlandish design of of Toy Man here. Now he does have a couple of accessories, one of which looks like a top spin, but it looks like it, ha it could be a wick, so possibly it's more like a bomb. Um, doesn't really hold the accessories all that well, be being that his hands are open. Um, I guess really this one he holds a little bit better. He does come with a spiked yo-yo. A little bit of paint, unfortunately, that's come off the yo-yo, or unless that's supposed to be there. No. It looks like it's come off. Uh, it is spiked, which I think is neat. Uh, you can wind it up too, so if you don't want as much as a, of a cord hanging down from the yo-yo, you can kind of have it wound up as well, like so. There's no really no place to kind of keep it together, but I guess you can kind of loop it around the hooks, prevent it from going anywhere. Now, he can actually hold this fairly easily being the fact that his hand is open. You just would droop the ring over top like so, and you've got his yo-yo ready. Um, you could probably have some real uh, cool poses where he's kind of just ready to haul his yo-yo off at somebody. But uh, yeah, I like, I like the fact that he came with these. I mean, for to have been Toy Man and not come with anything, that would have been disappointing. Even maybe a couple more of them would have been a welcome, a nice welcome treat as well. Um, in the way of his articulation, Toy Man has a very, very rewarding ball jointed head. You can get a lot of cool uh, movement, a lot of cool poses out of the head. He's got pin and socket shoulders, rotation in the bicep. Now he does have two point bend elbows. Which, unfortunately, I don't know why some characters have them, some characters don't. I mean, really, if you're going to give them to, to one, give them to all. But I guess they just want to reuse the same body mold as they had done in the past. And that's why some of the skinnier molds seem to have them, and then the regular molds don't. Uh, not only does his hand rotate, but it's also hinged, too. Which is, uh, which is nice, too. I mean, that's I really like that. Upper torso bend, although I really can't get it to... Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, it has upper torso bend. Rotation in the waist, legs go forward, back, out, rotation in the thigh, bend at the knee, and bend in the ankle as well. Um, I was actually surprised the fact that he had a double bend in the elbow and only a single bend in the knee. But as it is, 
There you go. Display stand. I know I've beaten a dead horse here, and that's a horrible saying. But a, you know, to beat a dead horse, it's a shame that he didn't come with a display stand that would have said, you know, Super Friends or something on there. Even though I know he is also featured um, from the the original Action Comics as well. Um, overall, I really like Toy Man. He doesn't have as much going on for him as maybe Samurai or as maybe as Bronze Tiger. He definitely has as much, he doesn't have as much detail as uh, Captain Boomerang, but just personality wise, and the fact he's a rogue to Superman, you can't get enough rogues, and uh, really, Toy Man, I, I just love this figure. I'm gonna give him an eight, and uh, I think of all the figures, for one that I think works the best with a lineup of DC Universe figures, I would probably say Toy Man here, just because, again, he is a rogue of Superman. You can kind of have him up there with the other Superman villains. Today's Toy Spot, we were wrapping up our reviews of the DC Universe Wave 18. We now have all the figures done. There's only now one more review to come, and that would be of Apache Chief. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks for watching, as you always do. See you guys next time.